So this poem is called Darkness by uh, Lord Byron. I had a dream, which was not all a dream. The bright sun was extinguished, and the stars did wander darkling in the eternal space. Rayless and pathless in the icy earth, swung blind and blackening in the moonless air. Morn came and went, and came, and brought no day. So this is a poem by, well, it still goes on and on, but it's a poem by a Byron who was a moon in cancer. And it's about how darkness can consume the light that is life. That I share. And so now we discuss uh, moon in cancer. Go ahead. Um, hmm. What do I have to say about this moon? I mean, the moon is in its natural rulership here. It's um, like the other water moons, a highly sensitized moon. And so with cancer, the crab can retreat into its shell. And so there can be this kind of defensive layer where they're very guarded or they seem to be guarded. Um, and perhaps, you know, I've, I've seen with this energy too, they can be so sensitive that they get kind of defensive, you know, in that passive aggressive type way. When really, like, they just actually want to be vulnerable and they just actually have a vulnerability to share and maybe they're not feeling safe to share that. So those are just some of my observations with this moon sign. Uh, this moon likes to, well, this moon would do well to know its own ebb and flow. Right, I was, I was just thinking that, like, to really track, like, they're probably very sensitized depending on what phase the moon is in. Super lunar beings, so they're very influenced by, it's a new moon, if it's a full moon, the sign the new moon is in. So, totally, knowing their ebb and flow, knowing the, the weather around them. And like any moon, uh, water moon, um, takes in everything very deeply and intensely. Uh, to the point where, where there's um, an effect on, almost an immediate effect on the emotion, the sensorium. I mean, it can, it can really be imbalancing for cancer moons to not um, have the time that they need to process their emotional energy and their experiences. Um, they need to really sit and allow their feelings to feel um, for days at a time. I mean, these are people that need that time to um, to sit with whatever it is until it's gone. Uh, instead of being, re I have to be careful with the control or any kind of reactiveness. There can be a tendency to control others. Um, and that has to be relinquished in order for the natural, in place or rather, and in place the natural birthing process, the ebb and flow of the nurturing process of bringing things to birth mm. through either art or creativity or life. That's a turbulent process and cancer moons need to learn to embrace that process and, and pay um, huge respect to their own moods and, and not to, you know, uh, to allow it that they're the moods, you know, because it's their process. It's how, how it is. And so they, they need, so partners rather, you know, or loved ones need to respect that space, uh, that they need so that they, um, can come back into the world, you know, when they separate and they can come back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're huge, hugely sensitive, um, beings. I feel like we didn't, we forgot to mention this with Pisces moon and we might have touched on it a little with Scorpio moon, but like those other water moons, there's definitely a capacity, an innate capacity for just high levels of intuition, high levels for maybe those stomach kind of feelings of, of of hunches and um, if something's off, they'll just maybe sense that in their stomach. 
whereas other, you know, air science might intellectualize, the cancer will really just feel the pure emotion and know how to respond based on that gut instinct. Um, very good practice for the water moons to become accustomed to looking at the facts of life and accepting them and not getting lost in its intuitions and its feelings, which are under turbulent transformation and change as feelings are. You know, um, so in, the earthly balance is kind of what you're saying by the facts of life, like bringing in that more. If, if we're not anchored by the facts, the dry, painful facts of, of reality, we become lost in the sea. And our emotions become something that pulls us out. Mm -hmm. And when we can drown in those ways, we need to feel those emotions out. But for to be grounded and anchored in this world, we have to come to terms with what the facts are and accept them. And with the water moons, there's a tendency to, to look through the rose-colored glasses of mm -hmm. life and to uh, dissolve into the illusion. Oh, everything's great. Everything's Jupiter. Everything's expanding. And they forget to look at Saturnine realities, those mm -hmm. grounded earthly realities where these are the facts. These are incontrovertible facts mm -hmm. that must be dealt with. And that doesn't mean they take... You know, that means that doesn't mean that that's the supremacy of life, these facts. No, but it's the anchor which grounds us to, to what is possible or not. Mm. And, and water moons would be good, would be wise to understand that. So that, and it's not a depreciation for their emotional turbulence, their oceans of depth and psychic powers and intuitive powers. It's just the anchor that we, we all have to, uh, to address in this particular third density uh, life experience we have. Hmm. If I heard what you're saying, then that that grounded kind of look at things can burst that emotional bubble that they could be floating around in, or confused by, or maybe even in some sort of drama around it can just kind of create some sort of balance to that that extreme you're talking about which i really think what you're talking about is more of an extreme of these energies because i don't know but, that it, but they're extreme they're water moons and this is what i've been talking about their emotional by their capacity for being extreme in many different ways. Mm. You know, water, the element of water, especially with the moons, is a very powerful talent in humans, which is why I'm making this very serious and distinct, this, this distinction. The water moons have special powers other humans don't have, and they have to protect those capacities. Mm. And while well, creativity and art in itself is a space away, we live in a third density world, so they have to come back you know, mm. they could get shipwrecked out there in the world of the imagination. Got it. But we're and we're amphibious beings. We live in the waters of the imagination as well as in the earth and realities of, of, of facts, you know, and constructs. Do you have um, any examples of Cancerian moons that you wanted to share? That might illustrate more of what you're trying to describe. I really... I, I, I don't know if you saw this as much, but I really see the warm, nurturing heart of love. And people are going to laugh at this, maybe in the character that in the characters that Clint Eastwood plays, hmm. because true love is not Jupiter; it's Saturn. Yeah, it's like that dependability, that loyalty, that steadfastness, that 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 discipline. You know, that the effort to discipline a child or discipline mm. something is true love. Yeah, I agree with that. Because it's like true love is the staying power to be through the shit and have someone cry and scream and still be there for them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's not It's not all this like extreme, overwhelming, lovey-dovey, uh, romantic or idealistic expressions. Mm -hmm. That's not what love is. Love is I'm going to put up with your fucking shit, you know. And it might piss me off, but I'm and it might piss you off, but I'll but I'll tell you what you need to hear, and we 
can grow. Mm-hmm. And that's that nurturing. Grow. That's very, to bring it back to the point of the, the birthing, the divine mother energy that cancer represents, the divine mothering archetype of really that protective, you know, the crab having this extremely soft, you know, under a belly, you know, in this protective vessel. And it's because it, so it's, it allows it to go deeper because it has that protection. It can be at the bottom of the ocean. Um, you know, when it's innards are all soft and gushy. So there's that tough love element to it. That's that I think nice, that yeah. type of body. Well said. The danger, of course, is, is cancer itself, the moon, so comfortable place for the moon. I mean, such a, a, a warm, um, world of, of nurturing, um, of, of space to, in, in order for birth to, to occur and for, um, nurturing to take place and for us to grow as children, you know, and in that sense, um, Control must be relinquished with this moon mm. because at some point every child reaches a certain age, whether that child is an artwork, an actual child, um, some kind of um, creative act born into the world. It must be, you must let go of it and let the world take it and let the world look at it as it will, judge it as it will. But um, the challenge in cancer is to relinquish and to let go of that control. Well said. Do we have any other points to mention or any other examples, artists? Or... No, none that I can think. So this concludes then our, our thoughts on the, the moon and its natural rulership and some of the nuances to this placement in a chart. Of course, you always have to look at um, aspects um, between other planets that will color and shape how this really shows up for a person more more accurately but i feel like um, yeah we really touched on kind of the essence of this moon that's it thanks all right that's it